Joe knows taxes. Joe knows the market. Joe knows social security. Joe knows income planning. Joe knows pickleball? No. This is Joe Knows Retirement. Welcome to another episode of Joe Knows Retirement. So we're excited to bring you a topic today of why advisors do not talk tax planning. This is a question we get very often from all the workshops we do in the community and all the outreach we do through, you know, this podcast, YouTube, the book we wrote. So many times we hear, my advisors never told me about this. Why is that? And so we're going to break down why your advisor may not be talking about taxes or not helping you yet with taxes. And the first thing to understand is how do you know if your advisor is talking about this or not? Well, are they doing the tax planning strategies for you? Are they doing things like Roth conversions? Are they looking at your tax return every year? Are they educating on things like the Social Security tax torpedo? Are they looking, do they have a tax planning software that looks to see what opportunities you have every single year? Are they very intentional about that approach? If they're not doing any of those things, it's pretty safe to say they're probably not doing tax planning. And the thing to watch out for is that a lot of financial planners will say that they do tax planning just to say it, but they don't, don't actually follow through with that. And so we can tell pretty easily when someone comes and sees us, or is their advisor doing the right thing for them or not? And we simply tell them, you know, tell that by, what have you done previously? Is your plan set up in the right way or have you been missing opportunities? And oftentimes we see people missing opportunities. And what we tell people is, it's never too late, but you gotta start acting now because you have missed some opportunities. We can't change the past, but we can't change the future, so we need to get going here and make sure we're preparing for what's going to happen in 2026 with tax rates increasing, and as everyone suggests, probably going to be higher tax rates in the future as well. So I've got six topics that I'm going to break down here uh, for you to decide if your advisor is talking tax planning, or, or, or sorry, why not they're talking tax planning. I already told you, you know, it, it, um, if they're not or, or, or whatever that case was. So let's talk through now. Um, why your advisor is not talking taxes. So one of the reasons why, and this is from previous experience that I know this is a fact, is that bigger companies will not allow their advisors to do so. And so we, we've seen this with a lot of the, the people that we work with from their previous relationship. But also I've worked at a bigger company before when I got started in the industry and they, it was a great company, um, you know, had a bunch of experience, had a bunch of great people working there. But they also have a lot of inexperienced advisors. I mean, remember, Joe Schmitz was 22 years old when he started with this company. I don't know if I'm going to fully trust 22-year-old Joe Schmitz to make sure he's making all of the right decisions and from a compliance standpoint, not getting my company in trouble, right? So they're having to put in more steps so that inexperienced advisor is not making any, is not causing any liability to them, basically. And so they're going to basically tell you, hey, don't we don't do tax planning. If you have any tax help, go to a CPA so that inexperienced advisor or does not mess up anything and cause them to have a bigger liability. And, you know, a lot of these bigger companies, you know, I'm not talking about the ones specifically I worked at, but just some out in the industry, a lot of them may be out there just to, to make more money rather than doing what's, you know, fully best and in the client's best interest. And so that's why I would highly encourage you to, to see, like, if you're with a bigger company, maybe that's a reason they don't offer is because they just don't want the liability. They already know people will pay them their fee. They don't have to do any extra work. And so that could be a reason why. Uh, your advisor does not talk tax planning. So that's one reason. Another reason is just clearly expertise. Um, expertise is something that, you know, don't, not only comes with a ton of experience. I mean, if you have a ton of experience, I'd actually argue that maybe you don't have the necessarily expertise because maybe you were trained up in a different environment. Maybe you were uh, trained up to sell products or sell investments. You weren't brought up how to do financial planning. Um, that's something that I'm very grateful for, for the way I was brought up is I studied financial planning in college and I took all the CFP courses. Uh, by the way, CFP is a certified financial planner. I took all those courses early on. And so I was not taught how to sell a product. I was taught how to do financial financial planning and make sure people are doing comprehensive uh, planning and covering in all areas like estate planning and income planning and investment planning and tax planning and healthcare planning and all these areas that actually move the needle for the client versus only focused on investment management, which investment management is important, but it's not everything when you look at retirement. And so that's one thing is just the expertise. Uh, one way to judge the expertise is do they know what they're talking about? I mean, you can tell pretty quickly if someone knows what they're talking about. And the way I kind of explain if they know what they're talking about is how simple do they explain things? If they're talking to you from a really 
really high intellect and they, they're trying to make themselves sound really smart and you can't understand them, I would I would not say they're very they're very sharp or have good expertise. Good expertise means they're gonna really dumb it down and make it very simple. Something my mentor always taught me and told me is keep everything at a fourth grade level. No one understands financial planning. And if you want to get something through, you got to keep it simple. I, I remember a saying too, as well, I heard is if you want to, uh, if I had more time, I'd make my, what I said shorter, right? It's easy to just talk and talk and talk. It's really hard to have a concise message in 30 seconds that tells you everything about a Roth conversion, right? So those are the things you want to make sure you're working with someone who's keeping things very simple. And that's probably tells that they know this stuff very, very well to be able to get it down to that, to that level there. Uh, another thing to look out for, for expertise is what are their credentials? Um, one is, are they just an insurance salesperson? Um, or are they, you know, a certified financial planner or a fully licensed fiduciary advisor, right? So all of our advisors here at peak retirement planning are fully licensed advisors. Uh, we don't want uh, fully licensed fiduciary advisors at that. We don't want anyone here that's not doing what's in someone's best interest. So that's extremely important. Uh, but understand with like the CFP, for example, that includes a tax course. And so if you have a CFP, that shows that you have that expertise in that area. Not all CFPs use that expertise because some just don't want to do the extra work. But if they do have that, that is something to look for. Hey, they, they probably know what they're, they're doing here from that um, avenue. And then the next thing is, do they actually do that for their clients and have that actual experience doing it? Uh, so those are the things to look out for. If someone doesn't have their CFP, it doesn't mean they're a bad advisor. It just means that, you know, you, you may have to do a little more due diligence there. Uh, but, you know, I would, I would highly I suggest you work with someone who has their CFP or looking to get their CFP. Uh, if I was not an advisor, I would definitely encourage my parents to work with someone with those credentials there. So that's one thing there. Um, also understand the ongoing education uh, is one another reason why advisors do not talk taxes. So kind of like that CFP, but also understanding that you could have your CFP, you could have that course in tax planning, but what are you doing to learn additionally? Something I always say is the tax code is written in pencil and it changes every day. And so if you're not looking at taxes every single day, then you're probably going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. Something I personally do is I read about taxes all day, every day. I mean, on the weekends, I have a list on Saturday mornings that I have articles from taxes and changes they're looking at making and changes they just made to make sure that our team is fully up to date with any changes that are going to occur and making sure our clients are best positioned. So if you don't have someone that cares about it that much, then you're, you're probably going to miss a lot of opportunities and not be innovative and, and be that, you know, next, that, that next, um, you know, be a step ahead basically is what I'm trying to accomplish there. And then also, uh, it just takes, takes more time. And a lot of advisors just aren't necessarily looking to take that time. Um, and so that's actually a personal thing that I actually had to go through is, you know, if I want to best serve my clients, I either have to hire a better team around me, or I've got to stop bringing people in. And so I decided that if I want to give my clients the best experience possible, it, it's going to involve building a team around myself so that I can specialize in the areas that I am, am best at. And some of those areas are making sure I'm looking at more of those advanced planning ideas to make sure that our clients and our advisors are delivering those to our firm's clients. So that's a step I had to make first. If I don't make that step where I'm, you know, head of research, you want to call it, then it's basically, you know, I'm not going to have the time because I'm going to be sitting in front of clients all day. And so this is a step I made. I think, hey, it's going to be in the client's best interest if I do this. And then we can better serve more people and give them a higher level service because now we have more than just one person looking at all of our client situations. So that's extremely important, that ongoing education. Get someone who's really, really sharp on this. You know, for us, we, we try to really stay sharp on our tax planning by writing, you know, like we wrote the book, I Hate Taxes. Well, if you write a book on tax planning, you're probably going to learn a lot through that. Uh, we write a lot of Kipperger articles on tax planning. We do a lot of podcasts, YouTube videos on tax planning. So that's what allows us to keep it sharp. And also we do it every year for our clients as well. So we're we're almost forced to. When you promise, when you promise someone tax planning, uh, when they first come on board, you know, to our firm, you got to deliver that. And so that's something we do every year, and make sure we're we're on top of that and giving the best experience. So the next uh, topic that you know why your advisor may not talk taxes is simply because of age. Um, I don't want this to come across as a harsh one. Uh, regardless of age, you can have you can be a good advisor. You know, we've got advisors here at Peak Retirement Planning who are who are you know 55 to 60. Uh, which is the average age of an advisor. We've also got advisors who are, are younger, like myself. Um, so it's not to say that one advisor based on age is better than the other, but it is something to understand on the point I mentioned earlier is that 
you know, if the average age of an advisor is 55 to 60, it means two things in my mind. One, they probably got started in the industry a long time ago. And if, when they got started, they were trained to sell, not, not plan, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but the other, the other thought is, is how many clients do they have? And I kind of mentioned that prior as well, is how many clients do they have? If they've got a thousand clients at this point, I'm sorry, but they're not going to want to take the time to read tax code every day to, to do tax planning for you because that requires a lot of work. We've had to build a team around us to be able to do that for our clients consistently. And if your advisor is just one person and they have all these clients, you're, you're probably important to them, but you're not going to be able to get that next, next level service. Plus that advisor doesn't really have a reason to do tax planning because you know, if, if you're not going to leave him anyways, then why would he get an added service if he can keep getting his paycheck is, is ultimately how some of these these guys think. So um, just think of that. I don't want that to come across as harsh that if an older advisor is bad, I'm just saying understand the situation. You know, an advisor with experience could be good, but it could also be bad because now they're not spending as much time learning it because they're spending more time servicing people. And, you know, they might not have as much motivation or um, encouragement to want to do that. So uh, just something to think about. Another reason why, uh, kind of on the point I just make though, is just to, to, to emphasize it is time. And most advisors, um, and I think this is kind of harsh, but kind of my point, they're, they're maybe a little lazy. Um, they may be a little, you know, settle in and uh, kind of content with their situation. And they don't want to take the time to, to do more work because they're servicing all those clients. So that would be another point um, just to emphasize what I've already said there. Um, the last point I'll talk about here, this is one that I don't like talking about, but it is kind of real, is compensation. Um, and I know this from previous experience, plus I've talked to advisors who have told me this directly. Uh, when you, you know, when you look to do some tax planning strategy, let's just talk about like a Roth conversion for an idea, uh, you know, for a situation. So let's just say you have $100,000 and your advisor is managing that $100,000. Well, your advisor is going to get compensated on the amount of money that they manage. Well, if you take that $100,000 and you move it over to a Roth and do a Roth conversion, for example, what happens? You've got to pay taxes on that money, don't you? And so if we pay $25,000 in taxes and we withhold it from that investment, how much of that advisor now managing? They're managing $75,000. Are they going to get paid more on the $75,000 or the $100,000 if they didn't do tax planning? And so obviously you can see that there's not a huge incentive for advisors to do tax planning for all their clients. I mean, think about it. What if they did tax planning for all their clients? And in that example, we did, you know, we converted a hundred thousand over, they lost 20%, 25%, whatever tax rates are for that specific situation that they no longer manage from that money. That's not really an incentive for that advisor based on how they're compensated, right? So again, it's just another reason why you want to work with a fully fiduciary advisor who you truly trust, who is not going to make decisions like that, who is going to actually do what's going to move the needle for you, regardless if they're going to lose a couple pennies or not. And at the end of the, at the, end of the day, if, if an advisor is worried about that, they're pretty small-minded. Um, I'll be pretty transparent. You know, advisors make really good livings because we have a really big impact in these people's lives and we have a really high level of expertise. But... Am I, am I worried about making you know ten dollars more at this point? No, not at all. I, I'd rather have someone get in the best situation possible, and so uh, just be aware of that. If someone that says something like that, it's just a red flag, and they may not say it to you, but I've actually had a company tell me that, and they've told me when I was when I was doing Roth conversions, they said, "Hey, you better watch doing that. That's less AUM, which is called assets under management. That's less assets under management that you have there. You're not going to get paid as much as time goes on." Um, is how they looked at it, and so I highly disagree with that concept. But also, at the way an advisor, like, I mean, let's think about it. If I'm going to have a relationship with the clients that we have for 30 years, let's call it 20 to 30 years, well it's actually going to be in a better spot if we do the Roth conversions now. Yes, we not may, may not make as money, much money right now, but if we can retain that relationship by delivering a high-level service over time, eventually we're going to save a lot of money on taxes over time because we're going to be more tax smart, we're going to be more tax efficient with their investments, and it's going to grow at a better pace, and we're not going to have these big liabilities from a tax standpoint in the future. So I actually think that if you do the right thing, it's going to come back in the end. It's one of the biggest advice I got from my mentor when I first started in the industry was just do the right right thing and it'll always it'll always work its way back right don't don't try to do something that's not in the client's best interest to get an extra dollar or two do what's right and it will always work out in the end and and i think that's some of the best advice i've i've ever received probably uh and, and allows us to to get to this to this point we're at so so those are some of the uh 
ideas there of why your advisor may not talk taxes. Like I said, if your advisor has not talked about tax planning before, if you go to them and ask them, hey, you know, why are you not talking it? They're going to they're gonna try to sell you. They're going to try to smooth you to say that, yeah, we do this. We do this. We'll do this for you. Don't worry about it. Just stay here. Don't leave. If they haven't done it for you over the last two years, the last five years, I mean, specifically the last five years, tax rates have been on sale since 2017. If we haven't done anything the last five years, we could have been missing opportunities. And so if your advisor hasn't even brought it up, you're, you're already starting behind. And so if they haven't brought it up in the next last five years when tax rates have been among the lowest they've ever been, and they're, what do you think they're going to do moving forward? And so just understand that if they haven't done it yet, they're not going to do it for you. Why waste the time and go back to them is also my thought. And you honestly have to kind of think about this as a business relationship versus a personal relationship. I know financial planners are great people. And, you know, by the way, I want to make it very clear. There are a lot of advisors out there doing tax planning. There's also a lot of advisors out there that are not doing tax planning. So I want you to understand that you may be working with an awesome advisor. And, and if you look through this and you say, yep, my advisor is doing this, my advisor is doing that, great. Stay with them. They are giving you a great experience is ultimately what our goal is. Uh, when people come and see us, like we don't really have a big um, you know, agenda item of like, we got to get them to move forward with us. I mean, yes, that's our goal. Like we're not going to waste our time eating with someone if, if we don't feel like we could potentially help them. But if someone's getting the right service, like we're not going to try to steal that that client if they're getting the right service. We're going to tell them everything looks good. Keep going. I'm not going to try to steal someone's clients if they're doing the right thing. If someone's not going to do the right thing, yes, we're going to try to steal them. And, and we've done that very often because people need this. People deserve this. So um, just make sure your advisor's talking about this is, is the idea. And if they're not, get, sec- get a second opinion, get further help, and make sure that you're on the right path. Because in my opinion, Taxes are among the biggest expenses for retirees, and it's something that you can control. In the book, I Hate Taxes, that I wrote, I talk about lowering your taxes and owning your retirement. How do we own our retirement? It's through tax planning. It's about getting ahead of these strategies, getting ahead of the curve, being proactive, not reactive, is ultimately what we want to see there. So there you go on another episode of Joe Knows Retirement. Hope you enjoyed this one. And like I said, go read the book, I Hate Taxes. Uh, You can actually fill out a link to, uh, if you go to our website, fill out a link to get a copy of that book and uh, make sure you can be a little more tax smart by reading that book and put yourself in a better situation. So that's it with the episode today and enjoy the rest of your day. Since we do not know your specific situation, none of this information can serve as tax, legal, insurance, or financial advice and may be outdated or inaccurate. The information comes from sources believed to be reliable but cannot be guaranteed. This content is prepared for educational purposes only. If you need advice, please contact a qualified CPA, attorney, insurance agent, financial advisor, or the appropriate professional for the subject you would like help with. Peak Retirement Planning, Inc. is an Ohio-based registered investment advisor and able to offer advisory services in Ohio and in other states where registered or exempt from registration. 